you've had hasn't or wanted hasn't been what you have shown or what's been shown at other places. That's frustrating. It's going to be hard to get somebody in, as far as my understanding, to make them believe that you're going to pour into them when you've yet to pour into them. And I know they've got deals with uh, NIL and stuff like that. Other companies said they was going to pour into Vandy and stuff, and they got billed with Vandy all over their, their campus and whatnot. But they got to show it. Mm-hmm. They they and, and, and it almost, in a sense, whoever you hire has to be a strong-willed, strong mind, strong personality person, too. Uh, I think so So much of what Vandy has going on, other than baseball, is somewhat passive, it seems like to me. It's, okay, yeah, we're, we're just getting along. You can't just get along no more. You got two, as you said a second ago, two really good teams coming in that really understand how to compete and have a big old wallet when it comes down to them spending and competing in the SEC immediately. I'm not about to champion them again when it comes down to that sport as far as saying, hey, you guys, you guys, you need to, you need to. No, I'm not into that. But get with it is all I would tell you. Whoever the coach is going to be, get with it and get with their plan and get somebody that's going to possibly tell you they know better than you when it comes down to sports. Right. Not the at sports. I know this stuff. We need this type of guy. We need money to go do this type of stuff. Until this NIL get regulated and transfer portal gets regulated – we need these type of guys, and, and they may have to answer that call and and call people as far as donors and boosters that they never had before. That's, that's my spiel on Vandy. The collectives mean something. Look, they do. And especially when you, you've, you've got to start getting guys in here now with a new head coach that are going to help you turn things around fairly quickly because you cannot keep digging yourself to the bottom of the SEC if you're Vanderbilt. It's doable, guys. It's not football. It's, it, this is doable for Vanderbilt basketball, but they have got to get it right and they've got to figure it out at the top in terms of how much they're going to invest. You're right. You got to put the, the you got to put it in there. You the got to put the question, how they going to convince a good coach to come here after and, and they fired a, a good coach? It's a good point. The early candidates, according to CBS's Matt Norlander, former Xavier and Louisville coach Chris Mack, Colgate's Matt Langle, I apologize if I'm pronouncing that incorrectly, Princeton's Mitch Henderson, Indiana State's Josh Schertz, and Washington State's Kyle Smith, the early names in the mix. Uh, Josh Schertz is particularly interesting because uh, has ties to the state where he was a D2 coach at Lincoln Memorial in uh, the state of Tennessee, spent 13 seasons there building them into a Division II powerhouse And his Indiana State Sycamores, although they did not win the Missouri Valley this season in the tournament, are excellent. And uh, in consideration, I believe, for an at-large bid this season. Chris Mack is interesting, uh, has not coached for two and a half years, was fired halfway through year four at Louisville with a 6-8 and record. I've seen a lot of people uh, for Vanderbilt wanting him and championing him. I would rather, if I was Vandy, go for a program builder who just built something from the ground up at a place with similar academic standards as Vanderbilt. Chris Mack wouldn't be a bad choice. Certainly he's a proven winner. He's, you know, taken Xavier and Louisville to really, really good places, but I would rather go the up and coming program builder route. And uh, shirts, I think is the guy uh, if I was Vandy. There's some also, also some other names within the area. Uh, Samford coach, Bucky McMillan, uh, just a, a younger guy. He's in his fourth season at Samford. Um, they've done a really good job in terms of winning the Southern Conference. Uh, they, I think this season, clinched a berth uh, to March Madness. No experience at the highest level, though. And so that that would maybe be a little bit of a worry. And then Nico uh, Medved, Colorado State head coach. He's 50. He has connections from when he coached at Furman. Uh, down in South Carolina. So there is some Southern connection to that. But Colorado State also projected to go to the big dance. Uh, They've been successful. The Rams have there at Colorado State. I'm not going into Kyle Smith because I'm selfish, and I don't want them to take uh, (laughs) Kyle Smith from my Washington State Cougs. But I will say this. He's a program builder. He's an absolute program builder. They lost everybody the transfer portal. They were picked to be last in the Pac-12. They finished after Arizona and are going to be in the tournament for the first time since uh, Tony Bennett took them there. It's usually what happens when you're good, yep. though. It is. They come knocking. Uh, Bucky McMillan, I think, is the best choice, but I don't know if he'll take the job. 
Yeah. How much of the We Suck tax do will they have to pay percentage? Mm-hmm. No, I'm talking as far as Randy. No, for real. You just fire stat. You do. Well, I think the concern is if you have a buyout north of $15 million, can you pay top dollar for the top up-and-comer? To me, Bucky McMillan is one of the top up-and-coming coaches in all of college basketball. Mm-hmm. I, I don't know if he'd take the job. This guy from Birmingham as well. But I think him or shirts, and yeah. you're doing cartwheels if you're Vandy. For sure. 615-737-1045, the number. There was a move made in the NFL yesterday that is good news for Titans fans that want one specific prospect. We'll tell you about it next. It's Ramon Foster for Hiller Plumbing, Heating, Cooling, and Electrical. The month of March, y'all, is Happy Golden Ticket Sweepstake at Hiller. You can enter to win at HillerGoldenTicket.com, and all you got to do is enter your email, and you're automatically entered to win. Prizes include a $5,000 Hiller gift card. You also can get a $1,000 Hiller gift card or be one of the 10 Happy Hiller Club memberships that they're passing out in this Golden Ticket Sweepstake also. Or just simply take advantage of zero interest financing for 48 months on a select new HVAC system or uh, zero interest financing on 36 months on the tankless water heater and whole home generators. That's a lot to get at Hiller, okay? So don't miss out and enter to win now again at HillerGoldenTicket.com.
What's going on? Eight o'clock. Good morning from the 1045 The Zone Studios. I am Robert Walsh. Titans didn't make any late night moves, but that doesn't mean there wasn't any action as the Chargers, in an effort to make some more cap space, traded Keenan Allen to the Chicago Bears for a fourth round pick. Last season, Keenan caught 108 balls for 1,243 yards and seven touchdowns, the second offseason in a row that the Bears have acquired a Pro Bowl wide receiver ahead of of the NFL draft. The Bears still hold the number one and number nine picks in the draft this year. Wide receiver market has been moving slow, and that worked in the Chiefs' favor as they landed former first-round pick Hollywood Brown to a one-year deal worth $11 million. The Chiefs had released MVS earlier in the offseason to save close to $12 million. Now they replace him with someone younger and for less money. In the SEC tournament yesterday, Florida over Georgia. Rand Carthon will be happy about that. He joins the show in less than 20 minutes, 85-80. Texas A&M takes down Ole Miss, 80-71. South Carolina beats Arkansas. Saw 80 66 and Mississippi State on to the next round over LSU 70 to 60. Who do they face in the next round? Well, that's number four, Tennessee. That will be the first game at Bridgestone Arena starting at noon. For all your foundation repair and waterproofing needs, visit USSTN.com. Breaking news at once on your home for the Titans and the Vols. This is 1045. The Zone. Hour number three, 8 a.m. in Nashville on a beautiful Friday morning. It's RKW, Ramon, Kayla, and Will, brewed by 8th and Roast. 615-737-1045, how you jump in. 104.5 The Zone TV, how you watch the show on Facebook Live, YouTube, Twitter, or Twitch. Twitch please. With Ramon Foster, Kayla Anderson, <laughs> Robert Walsh making the show happen. I'm Will Bowling. Coming up in 20 minutes, Tennessee Titans general manager, Rand Carthon. Joins the show with lots to discuss as new free agents meet the Tennessee Titans media yesterday with perhaps more still to come today with a media availability scheduled after we are done at 1030 today as well. Looking forward to it, seeing what they're going to talk about. Mason hit me up yesterday, said he was flying into Nashville. Got to take care of all the formalities and stuff like that. I think he may be a player that speaks today, too. So, Mason nice. Rudolph, nice. Uh, pretty cool. Got to tell Rand, stop hiring my old friends, man. I know. I'll just yeah, I'll just be mentioning it now in the locker room, going up to me. Oh, yeah, so my buddy, uh, my co-worker now. Uh, tell me about Ramon Foster's They're going to be like, who? <laughs> hey. Hey, sign sealed and, and, and shut. Okay, yeah, uh, they, they we we speak nothing. Let's do an under uh, undercover investigation. There's nothing to find. <laughs> There's nothing to find. They're like, I know nothing. So uh, yesterday we were at Buffalo Wild Wings in Hendersonville, hanging out with listeners up there, had a good time, and uh, had some cold brews and good wings. And I have a food fair or foul to everyone who was not there. Yesterday, because I tried something for the first time yesterday that may or may not have changed my life. Okay. Cheese curds dipped in caramel. What the? Cheese curds dipped in caramel. Ramon, did you ever end up trying it? I tried one what and then two. It was so good. Fair or foul, cheese curds dipped in caramel. It was fair. So, essentially, the way Rhett Bryan described it, and he's exactly right, is it has a chicken and waffles kind of taste oh. to it. Because you get like the sweetness and the savory in the same bite. Mm. Tremendous combination. I think what throws me off is the cheese part of it. Because I can see the chicken breaded with fried. that. But I think the cheese is what throws me off. But I don't I don't doubt that it was, if you guys are saying it's fair, until I try it, I can't knock it. it I didn't want to try it. Mm-hmm. I, I was like, you don't do that. You can use marinara or, you know, the, the, the other sauce that comes with it. It was, it shocked me. Okay. I don't know who thought of it. Last time I think 3HL was there, it was like, where's the caramel for the cheese curds? I'm like, why in the hell are y'all eating caramel with cheese curds? And lo and behold, it was official. So is it more of a dessert or still appetizer? No, no. it was an appetizer. It was okay. appetizer. All right. It was, Kayla. Like, it, it, and it's, the caramel's not super sweet either, so you don't okay. got to worry about that side of it. But uh, legitimately threw me for a loop. 
I'm going to raise you uh, the cheese curds in uh, caramel with cheese on apple pie. You guys oh, ever had I've a slice that. of cheese on apple pie before? I've only seen that in, like, movies. I've heard of it. My granny, dude, you could not get a piece of apple pie without a piece of cheese on it. Sometimes hoop cheese, which I don't know if you guys had hoop cheese here, but... What is it? Just a, a, a local southern kind of cheese, but I think that's gas, and when you tell people about it, they are not fans. I bet it gives you gas, too. <laughs> Dang. I, everything gives me gas, Kayla. It's not just the cheese on the apple pie, but... Uh, uh, in the F&M uh, Bank chat, uh, <laughs> Cronky says it's called caramel. Uh, no, it is not. Was it Lad Crom- McCronky in, in the chat? <laughs> it is caramel. 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 I say the caramel I think apple. I say, I don't know. How do I you say guys caramel say uh, pecan? Pecan. 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 You don't say pecan? No. Nah. Those people are un-American. Pecan? I'm pecan. fine with pecan. Pecan. Well, pecan mm. pie. I feel well, like pecan you're doing too much. I, I think you're doing too much when you go pecan. It's almost like going tomato. Like, no, it's a freaking tomato. tomato. Yeah, like, what were we talking about? Potato. Like, stop. Potato. Yeah, absolutely not. I'm just not an apple pie guy in general. You know mm. this about That's me. That's un-American. Who said it was un-American previously? I hate Warm apple pie. fruit. Hate apple pie and hot fruit. Can't mm-hmm. do it. I can deal with it. Best apple pie? The McDonald's ones. Those are Stop it. Very southern Straight of you to say up. McDonald's yeah. instead of McDonald's Just slap as my well. granny in the face, why don't you? He said, Mac, I'm going to McDonald's, <laughs> get me a pecan pie, maybe a slice of apple pie. Yeah. You want to talk about Take a pep those after strawberry this. cream pies are good there. Can't do that. Yes, you can. You cannot You can. That. I'm a strawberry fan. I cannot do strawberry fruit on like pies and stuff. I don't know what it is. Now that's that. crazy. Last what? one, pie over cake every day of the week. Cake ain't worth a darn. Mm. I'd run over cake with my truck. Jonathan in the FN and Bank chat says, Will eats dino chicken nuggets for lunch, probably. Uh, this is still America, isn't it? <laughs> what you, why would I, what's wrong with chicken nuggets? <laughs> Not a oh, thing. I love chicken, chicken nuggets. nuggets are outstanding. Yeah. Why, are you, why are we hating on chicken nuggets? Yeah, get you a good brand of them. Fantastic. That's like the lazy thing, too, that I always do. It's like, oh, what do you want for dinner? Oh, what do you want for dinner? I hate All right, that. I'm just going to get chicken nuggets. I'm going to put them in the oven, <laughs> and we're having chicken nuggets. I have a, a trick for that, by the way. <laughs> okay. Your significant other gets in the car. You say, guess where I'm taking you today for, for, for food? Guess where we're going for dinner? Whatever they answer with, you say, how'd you know? We're, let's go right now. That's how you do it. Yeah, I'm get in the car, that. significant other. Hey, guess guess where we're going for dinner tonight? Oh, are you taking me to uh, insert place here? That yeah. is a good point. Yeah. Oh my gosh, how'd you know? Yeah, it's a, we're, we're going right now. Wait, really? Yeah. Make them choose without them thinking they're actually choosing. Anyway, my, my luck, it would be Sunday and Cheyenne would say Chick Fil A. Well, yeah. What uh, if it was like Mapco or something? I mean, that's no. easy. I don't right think there. anyone has ever gotten in the car and said, <laughs> we're going to dinner at Mapco. <laughs> is, are we is, trash? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we are. We're getting anyway, an egg is, sandwich. Is cheesecake pie or cake? Cake. Uh, it's just Ooh, cheesecake. Cake. It's its own thing. I think it's pie. I don't think it has oh, to be one of the other. You're saying if there's a different. Is it? Cheesecake. It's set up like a pie. It's just cheesecake. It's on. No, but it's set up like a pie. Anyway. I argue to death on Nelson. I got time, partner. I'm not arguing with you. I'm just oh, saying okay. it's cheesecake is I just wanted debate. I just wanted to be just against you right cheesecake there. Cheesecake is I its think own I'm category. With you. I you, think I, it's a pie. It's a pie. Really? I think it's cheesecake. So it's a cake to you. <laughs> it's oh. a cheese and a cake. Anyway. Nope. It's okay. The internet says cheek- cheesecake is a hybrid between a cake Ooh, and a pie. Let's go. It's not possible to pick a clear cut side. Oh god! So God wills right about it. Oh, he's not. Yesterday, uh, Keenan Allen picked a clear cut side on the team he's going to play for in 2024. <laughs> That was a hard Try turn. Trying to get us back on schedule. Hey, it was, no, a, it was a turn that needed to be made. Keenan Allen, 31 year old, is entering the final year of his four year contract and was traded to the Chicago Bears for a fourth round pick. Agree or disagree? The Titans now have a better chance at landing Joe Alt. A way better chance. Because the Los Angeles Chargers are now on the market for a wide receiver with the fifth overall pick. Yeah, way better chance. Uh, Chicago got to pick up the $34 million salary this year, too. I think that's what was said was us owed to him. But when you're dealing with a rookie quarterback, these are the things that you're capable of doing. Um, they've just been stacking and stacking. I got some Bears friends of mine who are just rubbing their hands like Birdman right now, just ready to go, man. Just can't wait to talk trash. And the NFC North is... It's open for the most – oh, no, it's not. 
you got Detroit got good and also Green Bay also. Yeah. So Minnesota's actually taking the back seat. So Chicago may actually do something this year, depending upon what they do with the rookie quarterback or yeah. Justin Fields. And it hurts them nothing to keep Justin Fields also. Um, I think it does give the Titans a better chance at getting alt. Absolutely. Because we talked about Roma Dunze, uh, Malik Neighbors at that spot. I, I could see a Roma Dunze headed over there to the LA Chargers. Look, you've got to give Justin Herbert as many weapons as he can have now, especially I feel like he has, he has been expected to take them further in the playoffs. He has not been able to do that yet. You can also put a lot of that on coaching, some other things with injuries that have gone on there with the Chargers. But I say get him a young, explosive weapon, a guy that could be there for him. I, I mean, again, I look at a Roma Dunze like a Devontae Adams type of piece. I give him that. Yeah, he he deserves something. Uh, he's too good of a quarterback. Yeah. Uh, you know what he's turning into? Uh-oh. Phillip Rivers 2.0. Oof. Except for not that many kids. Uh, well, that's yet to be determined. <laughs> with, to be determined. With, but but it, that's what it seems like you're turning mm-hmm. into. It's like y'all y'all have the guy. You've had two guys right now as far as what everybody perceive him to be. And nothing for Phillip Rivers, although he's ton of yards, potential Hall of Fame player and stuff like that. And then you got another stud and Justin Herbert who all his weapons. He lost two yesterday and yeah. lost – Austin Eckler also, and they're trying to find out what they're going to do with this offensive line and everything else. Like, you got to figure it out. Somehow they was able to keep their outside rushers, Khalil Mack and Bosa, but you got to play offense. That's how it goes. You're going to try to run the football like 40 times a game in L.A. this year. Have fun with that. That's Jim Harbaugh. That's what he does. I know. Yeah. Uh, Rome or Malik would be good additions, but... Mm. We'll see. It, it's going to be a big year for the Justin Herbert truthers. And of the, like, if he gets the X, Y, or Z thing, he's going to be great. Oh, just wait till he gets a line. Oh, wait till he gets a, a good head coach. Oh, just wait till he gets a good offensive coordinator. Oh, maybe he's just not that guy. And, and we we make excuses for that. Is it because we don't see the L.A. teams as often and everything? Like, that's, that's the only thing I question. It's like... Why we make that excuse? I mean, they're only playing at three twenty-five versus noon. Like, but they're the usually NFL, blacked out regionally, though. Yeah, usually, unless you got the package to See, watch I, them. I don't think that argument works in the NFL because it's not like NBA games that are being played at ten p.m. tip-offs. Like, if you're watching NFL Red Zone, you're going to see West Coast games more specifically than you are your own region sometimes. Yeah, but to the point is, I'm not going to watch the L.A. team because I'd much rather watch Atlanta or something like that as opposed to just saying, okay, well, yeah, I'm going to watch the Chargers today. Like, and you got to be a fan of them also. They're the stepchild of L.A. too. I mean, look, they're they're San Diego's team, right? I yeah. mean, they're, they're the second to the L.A. Rams on top of it. But now you got a new head coach and you've got a, a little bit of a revamp. Justin Herbert has to take the next step. Has to. Coming up next, Tennessee Titans general manager Rand Carthon joins the show with tons to discuss after this. It's Ramon Foster for Two Rivers Ford. If you're thinking about purchasing a new Ford truck, the time is now at Two Rivers Ford because it's truck month. They've got financing rates as low as 1.9%, no payments for 90 days, and bonus cash offers too. And this is all on top of Two Rivers Ford, low prices because they always sell below MSRP. In fact, way below MSRP. But the best part about Truck Month is there is no pressure because Two River Ford has a non-commissioned sales team. If you're just interested in test driving, not ready to purchase yet, it's not a problem. You can even call them and schedule a test drive at your house, whatever is easiest to you. There's a reason Two Rivers Ford has been a landmark local business in our community for over 40 years and a reason they're one of the top Ford dealers in the nation. Two Rivers Ford, the South's most trusted Ford dealer.
Ramon, Kayla, and Will RKW is brewed by Eight the Rose on 104.5 The Zone. Ramon Foster, Kayla Anderson, Will Bowling with you. Joined right now by Titans General Manager Rand Carthon, who has been a busy man this week. What's going on, Rand? How are you? Top of the top, world. How we doing? We're good. Uh, good we are morning. good. Uh, Rand, I want to start. Are you aware that Ramon Foster is photoshopping <laughs> your face onto videos of chefs and tweeting out, let Rand cook this week? That does not surprise me one bit. <laughs> if it's Ramon doing some foolery out there in the world, that does not surprise me at all. <laughs> so do you like to cook, Rand? Actually, I do. Um, okay. But just for my family. <laughs> you know, uh, th- that's my that's my uh, my peaceful time. My time to get away is yep. to get in the in the kitchen and actually cook a little bit. I'm with you on that. See, it was a respectful Photoshop, though, man. It wasn't like you was out here with like a little skinny neck and small arms and stuff. Like you, you had it together, man. It was dope. I'm gonna be honest with you. It was real cool. That's I, I, I get I'm that gonna right. Have to check out your work. I'm gonna have to check out your work. It's, <laughs> that's that's subjective. I think if you if you're saying you did a good job or something, I think that's to be determined. Well, <laughs> R- Rand, R- Ramon Foster is known as the Big Ragu because of how good his lasagna is. That is his signature dish. It, when Rand Carthon makes his signature dish. What would that be specifically? Uh, I'd probably say my collard greens. Ooh, okay. That was a, that's, uh, I know that uh, the aroma fills up the house, and I know that's what gets uh, my teenage daughters out of their room for them to come down and want to know when it's going to be ready. So and I would say the, uh, the collard greens. And when you say Ramon's lasagna, has anybody tasted his lasagna to, to confirm that? Not in this building. A Ran Fa. A man by the name of Ron Slay is the one who attests for it. That's right. Just 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 Slay Dog. A Fa. <laughs> you got to bring it over there. We'll see. All right, all right, we'll set something up. I got you. Say less. You're not just going to be coming. That's that's two challenges issued this morning, okay? Is this the combine again? Hey, challenge. <laughs> Titans GM, Red Carthon, our guest. Ran, uh, good getting to meet a lot of the, uh, uh, the new members of your team yesterday as they met with the media uh, in the first wave. Uh, what is maybe one quality you feel like those guys have in common and, and the quality you're looking for as you uh, make these calls and add free agents? Um, outside of being talented football players, I think that goes without saying. I think, you know, everybody's seen these guys play over the last few years, but they're quality people. Um, I think as soon as you brought them in, there's not, you know, you, you instantly felt like, hey, these, these dudes are culture fits uh, for what we're trying to build. And, um, even just getting some of those dudes together, you you would think by, you know, by the end of the day, that they that they all knew each other, played college ball together, played high school ball together, whatever it is. But it was just um, instant, you know, energy, instant connection. So uh, that was one thing that stood out about me is how good of a uh, good of people they are. Ram, man, when when the news broke of Calvin Ridley committing to you guys, man, from every major news breaker was bombshell. Wow. I mean, the national guys. How in the heck did y'all pull this off? Well, I don't know um, who said it best um, or first. Um, there's a great poet um, by the name of Dwayne Carter. Or I don't know if it was the other great poet, Will Bowling, but uh, I think they both said real G's move in silence like lasagna. Come on, Rand. So, <laughs> so it was, it was just uh, what we jokingly call one of those G14 classified missions, and it was something that we kept tight, you know, in the building, and we just made a push, and uh, we're able to make it happen. So when it comes down to that type of uh, motion right there, that was a cool drop right there, by the way, too, Ryan. I didn't know he was going to come with that one this morning. It was pretty solid right there, man. Get you a GM that can do both, okay? Uh, with, with that being said, um, is, is that the method of operating moving forward? Um, a lot, leaks happen. People have sources and all that type of stuff. But being able to operate the way you guys have this offseason um, with the signings that you have and the guys you're bringing in, Cushionberry, I mean, just these guys came out of left field as far as the Titans have an interest in them. Is that the way you guys are moving? Yeah, because, you know, in, in this information age, you know, like you said, um, things happen. Everybody has sources. Um but these are good players that, that I'm pretty sure that their, you know, uh, previous teams wanted back. 
And so if there was um, any way for those guys to be tipped off, you know, and especially during the um, the negotiation period, I mean, those guys can have contact, if I'm not mistaken, with their current players, and we can't. And so, you know, these guys haven't met us, and these guys don't know anything about our program other than the contract, you know, that we're offering. So, um, you know, it's best for us to kind of stay low-key and, you know, stay off the grid um, and just, you know, hopefully have a good product to sell. And I think, you know, with what we're building, I think people automatically know, um, you know, just from uh, the history of the Tennessee Titans, what it is and what it means to play here. And then, you know, you add in Coach Callahan and what he's doing and the staff he's built and just the, the amount of relationships that this uh, current staff has, um, it's all beneficial to us. So we just want to, you know, do our part and keep working to, you know, build this thing to the best of our ability. Ren Carthon taking some time to join us in a very busy week here on RK Dub. So one of the things that I heard constantly from players yesterday at the podium was the word energy ran. And that seems to be just permeating from the building. Tell me like what's been the the major change in terms of the energy there and how much you guys are feeding off of that and, and being able to bring guys in the building to say, Hey, we're not leaving. I mean, you would have to you would have to meet this coaching staff, and I can't wait for you guys to meet this coaching staff. Um, I was just prior to this, I was going down to get in the sauna real quick, and um, got halfway down the hall and heard some Mississippi Delta blues being blasted, you know, out of Tracy Rocker's office, and you know, it's just that's just the vibe and the energy, you know, around here. You got guys like Frank Bush, um, who is you know instant energy, instant juice, and if you guys know Frank Bush is one of those people, he's up super early. He's in the office every day by 4.30. You can count on Frank Bush to send you an email with his quote of the day at 5.15. It's clockwork. Um, and, you know, you guys have met Denard, and I'll say you've only met him briefly, but you, you in your brief interaction with him, you see what that is. And, you know, we got guys on the offensive staff, Nick Holtz and Tyke Tolbert and Randy Jordan. It's just it's just a lot of, you know, energy and just juice that's just permeating throughout the building right now. One name that you continue to hear about is Bill Callahan, just a huge addition. Obviously the father of Brian, which will be a cool thing to see that dynamic. But, you know, even hearing from Lloyd yesterday of like, hey, Bill is a big reason why I came here. What is it like to just know you've got this man on your staff? Well, the first thing you learn is that you don't know I just had to catch my words because uh, we're on, on air. But you don't know anything about offensive line play. You know what I mean? Um, when we got together and we did the profile tapes and just the level of detail and technique that he was t- – and the way he was talking about it, like everyone was literally looking around the room like, yeah, we don't know anything. <laughs> but, you know, to have someone with his pedigree, uh, with his resume, you know, and he's he's like the ultimate O-line developer, um, it's it's definitely beneficial um, we can, you know, he's he's excited about the task at hand and, you know, add guys like Cushenberry to, you know, to it. And, you know, hopefully we're going to continue to do that, you know, throughout the rest of free agency, through the draft or however else, you know, we can continue to add good players and, you know, help build uh, both lines up front. Titans general manager, Rand Carthon, our guest this morning on Ramon, Kayla and Will. Rand, I've got to ask you about Derrick Henry because there are certainly a lot of people in this city who have a lot of love for him how much did you guys pursue a reunion with him in free agency and what ultimately led you to Tony Pollard? Well, I think, you know, um, just like everyone else, you know, in the city that has love for Derek, I think we all in this building do. Um, but I think it was just one of those times where I think it was just best for everybody to just move and proceed forward. Um, you know, I think uh, I think the world of Derek. You know, Derek's been the consummate pro. Um, you know, prior to me getting here and then me getting here and getting to know him, and you know, not to mention, you know, he's a Florida boy. So um, yeah, I don't know how much you guys know about you know the the, the Florida connection, but that's a real thing. Um, but you know, what ultimately led us to Tony was just you know his explosiveness, um, his ability to hit the home run. Uh, you know, his three-down ability, and then just being a, a good match with, you know, with Tajay and being able to have, you know, two guys out there whose game complements each other and, you know, allows us to, you know, have a uh, an explosive element. 
the other side of that, Rand, as you mentioned, I, I want to go to the coaching staff before we go before we go players even further, man. And you you mentioned your wide receivers coach, man, and all I've heard about him is how good of a coach he is, how good he is as far as route running, how good he is as far as teaching, and as that seems to be the case with the entire Brian Callahan staff, man. How much of that plays a part in the players' decisions to come here and? We watched, of course, in person, Calvin really do work in Jacksonville against his team down there and up here. Um, those coaches have influence on those players coming here and, and making this team uh, a competitive team going into this 2024 season. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, and, and it's just like anything else. Like these players, they talk amongst themselves, right? And so if you got guys who've played for any of our coaches, um, you know, I'm pretty sure they call their buddies to hear about them. And then once they, you know, get their buddy's uh, approval, then it allows them to do their own, <clears throat> excuse me, allows them to do their own research. So, um, you know, uh, oddly enough, uh, Tyke Tobert was the tight ends coach um, at Florida when I was in school. Um, so I had a, you know, I've known Tyke and, and his wife for, for a very, very long time, and he's always been a great coach. You just look at his history, all the receivers that he's worked with, all the receivers that he's developed, um, you know, he's a proven position coach, as is, you know, all the coaches on our staff. You look at these guys, they come with a wealth of knowledge, a wealth of experience, and the biggest thing of them all is that, you know, they truly believe in developing young talent. And the other side of this, too, is uh, you you signed uh, Kenneth Murray, a guy that I look at on tape and say he's a thumper, man. He's side to side. He's quick. He's a first rounder. And you also have a coach in Frank Bush, man, up the middle. As far as his abilities, and he said it yesterday in his press conference, man, I want to be on the field first, second, third down. Um, how big of a, a, a an addition he is to the squad in the middle? Um, is there other plans to get another linebacker? And what does Frank Bush mean to the development of a Kenneth Murray? Also, no, it was it was it was big to get K nine in here. Um, like you said, he's someone that you've been watching since the Oklahoma days. You appreciate the way he plays, and you know his athleticism and his length and his speed and his just ability to run. And just getting with someone like Frank Bush, Frank Bush is going to turn him loose, um, eliminate, you know, some of the some of the thinking and the processing, and just let him go hunt. Just let him go play ball. And if you look at Frank's uh, background, he's done that everywhere he's went, whether it's an undrafted guy, whether it's a first-round pick, you know, or a mid-round pick. You know, he's just uh, – that's what Frank does is he, he gets guys – he gets guys comfortable in, into who they are. And I guess in their own skin, if you will, and just allows them to go play uh, free football. Titans GM Rand Carthon cooking with us this morning on RK Dub. Okay, so we've got the draft coming up, and I know free agency still happening now. But the amount of times on this show that we get people calling in to give their perspective on who you guys should take at seven. It's just crazy. Like, I go to sleep having dreams of who you guys are going to take. Now, we're saying that, though, Rand, not having a third-round pick. I'm just curious, does that make things a little bit more complicated in, in terms of what you guys do in the draft? Because I know a third round is very valuable. No, I, I don't think it complicates things. Uh, you know, as you go, you, you continue to study the draft. And, you know, we've been we've been in this position without a third-round pick for a year, so it's something that, you know, you have a plan for. Um, and, of course, there are going to be players in that area where you, where you wish that you had a shot to – a shot to get them, and you know, just because we don't have a third round pick today, that means we won't have one draft weekend. So we'll see how that goes. Um, but it's funny you say how people call up to your show. Uh, my wife and I, we were we were out furniture shopping last week, and you know, just at a at a random place, and this this guy just comes up and is like, "Hey, just let me know when you're ready for me to tell you who we should take at seven. And it was probably eight o'clock in the morning and that was the, like I, I was just completely caught off guard but trust me as much as they call into your show they they stop me in public and say the same thing ran i believe it and you know bless you for 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 doing that and dealing with that but that's part of the job right and it, it makes it fun i mean you guys have spent so much time like you said preparing for this moment and still some time to do that uh, how big are these these top 30 visits and what do you really learn about the guys that you bring in um, these top 30 visits are big just because of the fact that, you know, uh, some of these guys are underclassmen, so you don't you have minimal exposures to them. And then not to mention, you know, you have them for a few minutes at these all-star games. 
You have him for a few minutes at the combine, but when you bring him in on a top 30 visit, you get him pretty much for an entire day. And so you, there are different touch points throughout the building uh, with people that they get to interact with. And so um, it's big for us to get to know the uh, the, the person. Um, like I tell all these guys, like we, we have so much time to watch film. They're not playing another game until August. And so the film is the film, but we, you know, we want to invest and spend as much time as possible in getting to know the people. So, Rand, uh, I, my, my brother, okay, and his his crew have labeled Bill Callahan as OLJ, okay? That's O-line Jesus, okay? <laughs> because of what he's capable of doing, man. And the way the season unfolds sometimes, man, guys have good seasons, guys have bad seasons. And the ability to coach up technique, the ability to make players better is something that seems like – Bill Callahan has been touted. I played for a guy like Mike Munchak that did similar things for us. When you look at one of the guys that's currently your roster, man, and as far as Andre Dillard, right, how do you build that process, man, of of saying, okay, this is where we start to move things, and not just him. You you, you got Jalen Duncan. You got MPF who went out earlier, man. Where does that fall into the conversation of how Bill operates with those guys moving forward? I think, you know, more than anything, I think he's excited to work with these guys, you know, work with the guys that we have on our roster. And, you know, again, I think it's proven um, that if you just buy into the techniques um, and the things that he's teaching, like it can it can help grow your game. Um, last night at dinner, I uh, was sitting there listening to, uh, you know, to uh, Lloyd and uh, Sadiq uh, Charles. They were, you know, sitting next to each other. They both sitting next to me. And just Lloyd talking to Sadiq about the the techniques and uh, the different things that he's already, you know, heard from Coach Callahan yesterday. I could see like Sadiq's mind being blown, you know. Um, and again, it um, it's it's all things like I, I mean, for example, if you look at where uh, Coach Callahan took uh, Ethan Posick's game, you know, in Cleveland. And how you know how he grew and how he was able to get a long term deal and kind of really jumps restart his career. Like we don't get Lloyd Cushenberry if he doesn't have the relationship he has with Ethan Posick, who can vouch for what Coach Callahan is capable of doing to your game. No doubt. And in that interior, in the, in the O line, it's all technicals. Everybody's big, and that's one thing I. I Man, Munch is golden to me, and that's all I've ever heard about Bill Callahan, too, is the technique saves you when your athletic ability is out the window. Oh, 100%, you know, because when, when all things is equal, you know, you got to be able to be, you know, technically and fundamentally sound, and that's going to be the base and the foundation of everything we do up front. Titans GM Rand Carthon, our guest. Rand, when you look around the AFC South, how much are you paying attention to – big moves your division rivals have made and thinking, okay, if they're loading up in this way, I've got to then make a corresponding move because I've got to see that team twice. I imagine there has to be some kind of balance there, obviously. Where is that balance in looking across the division while also realizing that you guys have a plan and you guys want to build things your way as well? Yeah, so, I mean, you see the moves that they make. You know, obviously, like I said, with with the this being the information age, um, <clears throat> in front of my desk right now, I have one screen on ESPN, one screen on NFL Network, so there's something always coming across and you see them. Um, but we're more so focused on building a team for us and not necessarily, you know, building a team because, you know, Houston, India, or Jacksonville made a particular move. Like, we're, we're very well aware of what they're doing. Um, but we want them to have to, you know, look at us in the same way, in the same vein. So uh, we're trying to build this team, you know, in, in the best of our abilities and what we're trying to do schematically, you know, in all three phases. Rand, what is the best song by poet Dwayne Carter, in your opinion, if you're picking one, maybe two? I'll give you a little bit of an album. Mm, let me see. Um, let me see. Uh, Misunderstood is one for Strong. me. Love it. Um and uh leather so soft. Oh okay. those, just, those just takes me back to to different points in life <laughs> and where you were, you know, uh at those times. Because I think leather so soft was around that uh I would say like oh seven ish. And so uh It's a good time. Yeah. Uh Misunderstood and, and leather so soft. That's uh, I think that also has Nashville native uh, All Star Starlito as a writer or performer on that song too. By the way, so shout out to you for just dropping that. that one, man. All Star, that's that's major. Also speaking, uh, listen, I, I listen. I know I've been. I don't know 
Starlito, uh, but been a big fan of his his music going all the way back to his I and E days. You know, early on with Yo Gotti, I've been a been a Yo Gotti fan for forever, and that was my introduction to uh, to Starlito back in those in those days when they were on the label I and E, and that was way way back in the day. We're talking o three o four days. So we need to get a Ram playlist first and foremost. <laughs> um, and then second, one more from B, because I have to ask about the shoe collection for this year, what we can uh, expect to see on the field, because we are all looking at the fit when you get out there before games. Yeah, I mean, um, like you said, these last couple of weeks have been crazy. Um, my office is a mess right now. <laughs> and I was just sitting down and just looking at the amount of shoes um, that I have either next to my desk in my bathroom or, you know, in the closet in here. So that was the first thing I thought about this morning. I was like, man, when I'm, when I move into my house, I got to get all these shoes out of here. So, um, I still have a few pairs that I haven't worn yet. Okay. Um, you know, excited about it, but just kind of waiting to see what the new releases are going to bring. Love it. I, I Just one and a half for me, okay? When it comes to visitors, can you really speak on them much at all? Because a, a lot of our fan base want us to ask about certain players that's on visits. Can you really <laughs> talk about them, and will you give me a real answer? Um, I'll, I'll, say, I'll say this much. Uh, let, let's reconvene on the visits. Let's make sure they actually get here. Okay. Because, okay. you know, things happen where, you know, they may visit another club, and another club may make them an offer. You know what I mean? So I think, you know, talking about it too early kind of gets you ahead of yourself. But we can uh, we can double back after some visits and have those conversations. And you're really not slick either. You took your wife to shop for furniture, okay? But I know there's a trip involved in this because you've been busy for a year straight. Where are you going? We, we, we doing Paris? We doing Cancun? We doing Cabo? <laughs> uh, private jet? First Greece. class? What we doing? First of all, I act my wage. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so we won't be doing anything exotic. <laughs> Honestly, when I get my first break, I'd, I'd love to go back home to Key West and nice. just um, just disappear for about five days and, you know, just turn my phone off and, and just be, just hang out on the island and just, you know, just, just hang around my people. Um, but I'm, my wife was trying to get me to do, you know, go to the island somewhere. Um, everyone who knows me knows that Jamaica is my is my place. Uh, I hope to, you know, retire there one day. Um, but I'm not quite ready to make that trip. So if I go anywhere in in current times, it'll probably likely be the Key West. No doubt. Love it. He is Tennessee Titans general manager, Rand Carthon. Uh, Rand, we will hold you to that and uh, circle back when the dust settles on uh, the entire off season and uh, hopefully do it again soon. We appreciate the time. No, absolutely. I appreciate you guys. Thank you. Appreciate you. Yes, sir. There he is. Titans general manager, Rand Carthon, with lots to say this morning. We will recap it and react coming up next. <laughs>
Hey, it's Kayla Anderson for Save a Tree. And on the line, we have with us our good friend and certified arborist, Dean Glasscock. And Dean, uh, tell us about tree and shrub uh, and lawn care in terms of what you guys do this time of year now that hopefully most of the winter storms have passed. Yeah, that's right. Uh, Well, first of all, just pick up the phone and make sure you call us if you're thinking about your landscaping uh, for the spring and summer months coming ahead the growing season. Uh, 615-299-9999. I've been talking that way a long time now with this phone number. Uh, 30 years almost we've been serving the uh, zone customers So here in Nashville. But save a tree. Uh, that's right. We uh, protect your investments. You know, if you have spent a lot of money around your home with landscaping, you know how expensive it is. We can help you protect that with a great uh, policy of taking care of the uh, disease and insect control around your home. Also, don't forget, we we do lawn care as well now. Not mowing, but we do fertilize and, and keep up the soil the way it needs to be for all the plant life around your home. Your mature trees, anything to do with any of that. So we are certified arborists on staff here and ready to serve you. So give us a call, 615 619- Two nine nine ninety nine ninety nine. We'll come out for free, look around, and give you our best uh, estimate to tell you what you need to do to keep things beautiful. So I hope you all have a great weekend, and uh, we'll see you next week. Thank you. Bye bye. Thank you, Dean. It is saveatree.com, S-A-V-A-T-R-E-E.com. They are the experts. Just simply call them six one five two nine nine ninety nine ninety nine.
Great discussion this morning with Tennessee Titans general manager Rand Carthon. And if you missed that, it will be available wherever you download podcasts in seconds. Ramon Foster, Kayla Anderson, Will Bowling with you. Robert Walsh making the show happen. That was awesome. Good stuff, guys. Fun. It was, man. Appreciate that. I felt like that. he was comfortable. Yeah, yeah, he, he, uh, he alluded to that. Hey, he uh, he wanted to do this thing, man. So I'm glad that they reached out to us. Kayla, you was there to receive that, man. Yeah. It was super dope. I was upset that you guys did not let me ask him about trying out for uh, the defense. Oh, God. You guys put the hush on me, and I don't know how I feel about it. I, I figured you'd jump in, man. Well, I mean, all this talk about they've got to sign another linebacker, and, like, here I am willing to put my body on the line, on the linebacker. And I'm just a little offended that you guys don't believe in me enough to sell myself to the general manager. You only get opportunities like this once in a while. That's very good. Who's the Nashville Cats general manager? Maybe we should start with smaller (laughs) ideas before we aim for. I thought he was doing sideline cheer. You got to shoot for the moon and see you land in the stars, Will. Land of the Cats. I thought he was going to trademark that belly roll on the sideline. I mean, it's going to sell tickets. I'm just saying, Nashville's got jelly roll, and then they could have belly roll. (laughs) Belly roll. Uh, We have a draft (laughs) trade in the NFL, ladies and gentlemen. The Vikings and Texans Mm. have agreed to terms on a major deal. Minnesota gets another first-round pick. Number 23 and number 232. They pay a large price to the Houston Texans, who get 42, 188, and a 2025 second round pick. Nick Casario and the Houston Texans are dealing. They are having an outstanding offseason. For Minnesota, why do you think they need a second first round pick? Quarterback. Pick quarterback on one and get uh, either outside edge rusher or wide receiver or best available for the next one. They have been depleted right now. Mm -hmm. Um, They have been. It's necessary for them to compete. They're they're in the same position that everybody else in the AFC South feels young, new, and trying to find their way fast. And the name that seems to be coming up with that position they could get themselves into is J.J. McCarthy, who's... Stock has definitely gone up here in the last month or so in terms of the the next kind of quarterback name you're hearing after some of the top two or three. But I think this is this is right. I mean, you don't have a quarterback right now for the most part of the future. And you are still trying to deal with the whole Justin Jefferson thing. So maybe you do try to say, hey, we're going to we're going to get a future wide receiver in year two. It's interesting. I wonder if. The Vikings are going to use those picks to go up to five with the Chargers in trade with L.A. After the move L.A. just made yesterday, shipping off Keenan Allen for a fourth. Yeah, my bad for interrupting. I was saying I didn't even think about that. Yeah, because I think the Giants are very much in the J.J. McCarthy sweepstakes at six. The trade value chart agrees with you, Will, because the fifth pick, and if you agree to the Jimmy Johnson trade value chart, the fifth overall pick in this draft is worth 1,700 draft points. The 11th and the 23rd combined would be over 2,000 draft points. So well over the trading for a quarterback threshold of overpaying, uh, that would be fair compensation for the Vikings to move up from 11. There you go. 11 to 5. Correct. Who's 5? The Los Angeles Chargers. Chargers. So Chargers move back potentially. Mm-hmm. Huh. It's interesting. Chargers go going wide receiver at some point in one of their first two picks. Got to. Hey, you have to. Right now, it could be Roma Dunze at five or Malik Neighbors uh, or Marvin Harrison Jr. if something really weird happens. Mm-hmm. But uh, interesting. I, I think the Titans' chances of trading out of seven drop with every one of these moves. I think the Titans are sticking at seven, and I think they're taking – their left tackle, and I think it's probably Joe Alt. That settles me more yeah, I on so Alt. Too. Okay, I right, think Joe Alt's the guy. Six one five seven three seven one zero four five. We'll react to what Rain Carthon said on our show a few minutes ago, including a note on Derrick Henry and Tony Pollard, and much more. That was interesting from the GM this morning. Next.